Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your own website. This is where we start. I have set up a Ubuntu instance in Azure. I will show you how to install the LAMP stack and integrate with WordPress. Last but not least, I will also show you how to install the SSL cert to secure the communication to your website. Let's start with section 1, how to update your Ubuntu server. It's always a good practice to update any new server uh, with the latest update or patch. So let's start by updating the instance. Enter the following command to get the latest update and upgrade at the same time. You don't have to worry about you know, keeping up with the speed of the typing. I've basically made a reference link below where you can get all the commands in my web page. Depending on how many updates available, this could take, you know, a split second, maybe to a couple of minutes, depending on how many updates you need to upgrade. Now let's move on to section two where I will show you how to install the LAMP stack. Let's install the Apache web server. The above command will allow you to install Apache 2 into your Ubuntu server. Let's do a quick verification to see if the Apache server is installed and up and running. You should see active running if the Apache server is installed properly. Next, let's install the MariaDB. Then let's do a quick verification if it's installed properly and running by typing in the same similar command that you did to check the Apache server. You should see that the MariaDB service is active and running as well. Once we are done, let's also run a simple script to secure the uh, MariaDB installation. It's always a good practice to set your root password. Next, let's remove all the anonymous users and disallow root login remotely. Then, remove all the test databases come with the default install. These are the few steps that you need to do the basic securing of your MariaDB. And that's all. Now let's move on to install the PHP and the mod modules. Now we're ready to move on to section 3, which is to configure your web domain. Let's start by creating a directory using your web domain. If you are creating multiple websites on the same server, this helps you to quickly identify where all your pages are stored. Next, let's copy the default configuration and rename it as the new domain that you have set. Then, let's nano into the config file and do some basic changes. What you need to configure here is the server name, which coincide with your domain name. Also change the document root to the directory that you have created for your domain. After the configuration, first disable the default configuration by issuing the sudo a2 decide 00-default.config. Then Enable the new website that you have basically configured. And this configuration is actually demo draco that southeastasia.cloudapp.azure.com. Don't forget the .conf. Now let's do a quick verification by doing a ls slash etc slash apache2 slash sites dash enable. You should see the configuration file listed in that directory. Once you are done, just reload the Apache server for the configurations to kick in. If you are not using the root account, remember to type sudo before the command. Now we are ready for section 4, configuring MariaDB. Type in the command sudo mysql. That will bring you into MariaDB. You can issue the command show databases to check what are the databases that are already present in MariaDB. 
as you can see in this setup, uh, I have a few test databases that has been set up prior to this demo. What you want to do is to create a database that is not already uh, inside your MariaDB for the WordPress integration. For this demo, I'm going to create a database called Draco WordPress. Then I'm going to create uh, a user account for the integration and grant it full access to this database. Remember to create your own unique name and secure password for this installation. So please do not use the username and password that I have entered here. Then issue the command flush privileges so that it will reload the grant table without the need to restart the database. Now we're ready to move on to section five, install and configure WordPress. Let's start off by downloading the latest WordPress. I usually like to do this in the temp directory as in case I forget to clean up and delete all the files after my installation, it will get uh, auto deleted if I reboot the server or I can have a cron job running to clean up this folder uh, at the end of every day. Once you have unzip the tar file, you should see a WordPress directory being created in the temp file. Now next, what we're going to do is to copy the default or the sample WordPress config file and rename it as wordpress-config.php. This will be the file where all the integration configurations uh, will, be do, will be done later. Next, you can also create the upgrade folder so as to prepare for future upgrades that you might need. Now we are ready to copy the content from the slash temp WordPress folder to your website folder that you have created early on. Now we're going to do some basic changes to the permission of the folders and the files so that you restrict access to only read for you know, the web uh, browsing or for users accessing your website. Now let's get the sets of new secret key that is required for the e WordPress integration. Always generate a new set of keys for all the new instances that you are going to create. Copy this set of secret key so that you can paste it into the, the WordPress config later. Now let's edit the WordPress config file under your domain directory. There are a couple of key configuration that you need to do here in preparation for the WordPress integration. You need to define the database that you have configured for the integration, the username and the password that you have created earlier on. You might also want to add in the fs underscore method to direct to allow you to upload files directly to the WordPress application without using the secure FTP capability. This does help to save some time, right? So you need to balance between security and ease of access. For demo purposes, we want to keep it simple and easy for us to access the WordPress uh, directly and quickly. Last step of this configuration is to copy and paste the set of secret keys that you have generated earlier into the configuration file. Then hit on Control X and then save the configuration and then you can exit the nano configuration. Now we can move on to the web browser to configure the rest of the WordPress integration. Now, when you first access the website, yeah, you just need to choose the default language that you want to use. Click on continue. Here is where you set up your website, right? So give your site a title and then create a new username and password. Remember, this is not the username and password that you use for the database integration. This account will be used to administer the WordPress application. 
and you need to install an email address where you can use to reset your passwords and maybe use that as a SMTP um, email address. Once that is done, you can now log in with the username and password that you have created in the previous section. Once you're logged in, you'll be brought to the dashboard. In today's tutorial, we'll not cover how to use the WordPress. Uh, stay tuned for other videos if you're interested to understand how quickly you can uh, set up a default web page and get it published. Now we're ready for the last section of this tutorial, section six, configuring and enabling HTTPS. I'll be showing you how to use the free SSL provider, Let's Encrypt, to secure the communication to your website. You can visit certbot.eff.org to read up more on how to install the SSL certificate, whether it's using the automatic mode or the manual mode. In this tutorial, I will show you how to do it the automatic way. First, what you want to do is to install the SNAP server. You might want to do a quick check for any updates. Then install certbot. Next, prepare the certbot command. To start the automatic install, it's as easy as keying in sudo certbot dash dash apache. As you can see here, I only have one website available right now. So by default, you can just choose one, which is the website that you want to basically protect with the SSL cert. Once you hit enter, you should see an option to install the certificate. In my case, uh, I've installed the certificate earlier on. So what it prompts me is whether I want to attempt to reinstall this existing certificate. So I'm gonna do that press by pressing one. What it does is automatically check whether the website is reachable, uh, do the necessary enrollment and configure the Apache config file to activate and redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So as you can see here, when I enter the new website address, right now, instead of seeing the unprotected website, I am now seeing a protected website, right? Denoted by the log icon on the left side of the address. If you look into it, you can see that the connection is secure and the certificate is issued by Let's Encrypt. So that's all for my tutorial for today. If you would like to learn more, do let me know what are the contents you would like to see, especially with pertaining to setting up your demo website. Thank you and have a nice day.